Good evening. I have not heard you doing, uh, I don't know whether you've just started. Uh, can uh, any chorister sing for us uh, Amazing Grace? Do we have choristers here? Yes, please. Okay, fine. Uh, you can uh, sing for us 109. Is it 109 or 108? Amazing Grace. I'm not to me a nimbus are pretty. 109 Mavilas Grace. 108. Yeah. Is it that one, Elda? One, 108, amazing grace, not marvelous. Marvelous is 109. Basil. Nobody singing. Christine. Yes, Elda. Yes, now you can sing, or you don't have a hymn. I have a hymn, but Basil will assist me on this one. Okay, you don't know Amazing Grace. I know it. <laughs> uh, why do you want to be assisted? Basil already has prayed. Now we, we need a diversity of... Uh... We sing the whole of it? Yes, it doesn't have ten stanzas. <laughs> okay. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saves a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. It was grace that took my heart to see, and grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace I I the Lord has called me good to me. Is all my hopes and He will my shame and be as long and you many dangers just as me I have become till grace has brought me there the sun and grace will lead me when we've been left and cross and been bright shining as the sun, with no less death to see God's praise than when we far begun. Amen. Amen. Uh, we want to pray, and then I'll begin straight away. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we want to thank you for this evening. Thank you for joining this forum. We pray that you may forgive us our sins. Accept our sacrifice this evening. We pray as you pass around by blessing your children, do not pass us by. In Jesus' name we pray and believe. Amen. Uh, the title of the message, as you saw in the poster that was circulating, begin from youth. 
what is this that we we need to begin from youth most of the characters that will go on in life begin in our young age as we are approaching teenagehood and then they are strengthened when we are teenagers and then uh, they become a habit or a character in us so there are things that we need to begin when we are youths and so i want us to go before i i go to the text that i had chosen ecclesiastes chapter 12 verse 1 let us go to the book of first kings chapter 18 i'll come back to ecclesiastes chapter uh, 12 later so i want us to go to the book of uh, first kings chapter 18 let's read from verse 1 the bible says and it came to pass after many days that the word of the lord came to elijah in the third year saying go she thyself unto ahab i will send rain upon thee and elijah went to she himself unto ahab and there was so famine in samaria the commentators and even the bible itself say that the, the famine that appeared three and a half years in israel may even mothers to eat their children remember the two mothers who were fighting when the king found them asking what was happening and then he said that yesterday or the other day i killed my child he ate with this woman it came to this time her time she refused so they were fighting that is how the day was the problems but were being solved that's how it was it was severe coming in Samaria. the bible says in first thing and after the book of adam which was a governor to his house in brackets is now Obadiah feared the Lord greatly. Let me repeat that one again. Now Obadiah feared the Lord greatly. I don't know whether you know what it means to be a governor in the house of Ahab at the same time you fear God. I don't know whether you understand to be a governor in the house of Ahab and at the same time you be a Christian. Let me give you a little bit of background on the house of Ahab. Let's go to the book of First Kings, chapter 16. First Kings, chapter 16. Uh, first thing chapter 16 we are reading uh, from verse 13 to 33 this is what the bible says and Ahab the son of Omri did evil in the sight of the Lord above all that were before him so Ahab was a wicked king who did much evil than all kings who had done for him. And it came to pass as if it was a light thing for him to walk in the sins of Jeroboam, son of Nebuchadnezzar, that he took the wife Jezebel, the daughter of Ethemal, king of Zidonians, and he went and served by and worshipped him. So as if it was a small thing, he married Jezebel, the daughter of Ethman. This was one of the wicked women who made the Israelites, the entire Israel, to uh, see before the Lord. And so we see uh, Jezebel, uh, a wicked, uh, a wicked, uh, a plus the husband, they were very wicked. They did evil in the sight of the Lord. 
Let's take a more insight that was taking place there. First Kings chapter 21, verse 25. 21, verse 25. The Bible says, But there was none like uh, unto Ahab, which did sell himself to work wickedness in the sight of the Lord, who Jezebel, his wife, stand up. Now, LMG White says, The choice of a life pattern will affect you in this age or in this life and the life to come. He married Jezebel, the daughter of Edmund, who was a pagan. And uh, the wife, the Bible says that the wives had him to do evil. Listen, you may have lived a simple, peaceful life, only a life that you to mess up. You may have lived a simple, peaceful life, only a boyfriend or a girlfriend to mess your life completely. The choice of a life partner can make you go to hell or to heaven. And so, Jezebel started Ahab to do evil things in the sight of the Lord and led the entire nation of Israel to sin. And that is why God punished them by bringing a famine in Israel which lasted for three and a half Yes. Not only that, let's now go to the book of First Kings chapter 18, where we are reading. Verse 4. For it was so when Jezebel cut off the prophets and killed the prophets of the Lord, that Obadiah took a hundred prophets and hid them by fifty in a cave and fed them with bread and water. You see, Jezebel killed the prophets of God. When you kill the prophets, you have cut communication between man and God. Because God used to talk to the prophets and in turn the prophets talk to, to, to human beings or to, to us. So he cut communication between God and what? Man. Killing the prophets, he also Cut a prophecy which was telling us where we come from, where we are, and where we head to. So there was total darkness in Israel. But the Bible says Obadiah took a hundred prophets and hid them in a cave, fifty and fifty on the other side, and he fed them with water and bread. Where did he get water and bread during this famine time? One of the commentators, the Jewish historian of the school, Josephus, said that he took a long time to feed the prophets of God. Which excuse are you having? You are saying to me in the poor mind, yet you have three forms. Each form is serviced. 50 shillings a day or 100 shillings. And you see that I don't have money. But the work of God is languishing. And so he sacrificed. And Jesus Christ is calling us to sacrifice for his work. But that was not my interest. If this man, the Bible says, he greatly feared the Lord. And he was able to survive as a governor. Now, I don't know, maybe we might lose focus. The governors of nowadays, they rule in a big area county. But this government that you're talking here was a governor in state house. We can say state house controller. He knows who is coming in and who is going out. And he knew everything. This was a person who was close to the king. 
and my sister were walking together. But the king did not influence him to worship Baal. How did he manage to stay in such a place like this and yet he did not worship Baal? He did not see. That is why the Bible says that he greatly feared the Lord. Some of us have excuses. Everybody is doing it. Why you dress like this? Everybody. Why choose my dress and all that? We are so influenced by the world until we have failed Jesus Christ. But this man was able to stay firm. He was the last man standing alone. He was not influenced. Cannot be said that you are one man or one lady standing alone. This was a person who woke up and found everybody was headed to west and he was the only one headed to east. As long as you are doing right, keep on going east and Jesus Christ will bless you. Now, it's amazing. This was a star shining in darkness. God wants us to shine because total darkness is surrounding us. If you read the book of Isaiah chapter 60 verse 1 and 2, gross darkness engulfed the people of God. It's there. But God wants us to shine as stars in darkness. But the problem is we have become part of darkness. There is no difference between us and the people of the world. And so, God wants us to be a palm in the desert. How can you find a palm in the desert? That is what God wants us to be. We are a city thing on top of the hill. And so God wants us to shine. And so, there is a miracle here. There is a miracle here of this man, standing alone. Now, let's go to verse, I think it's verse, we are still in the book of 1 Kings chapter 18, now. we are reading verse 12, let's go to verse 12, this is what the Bible says, because I don't have time to read from, to connect, it says, and it shall come. By the way, they had met with Elijah, and he says, Go, go, go tell uh, Ahab that it's going to rain. So it says, Verse 12, and it came to pass, as soon as I'm gone from thee, that the Spirit of the Lord shall carry thee either I know not. And so when I come and tell Ahab, he cannot find thee, he shall slay thee. But I thy servant. Fear the Lord from my youth. Obadiah was another person, married. But he said that the fear of the Lord began when he was a youth. If you cannot begin to fear the Lord from now, it becomes harder. When you get married, when you become an adult, the fear of the Lord began when he was a youth. One pastor who had a congregation of 4,500 did a research on his members. And just like his audience had found, 400 were saved when they were below 10 years. 600 were saved when they were 11 to 14 years. A thousand were saved when they were 16 to 20 years. 24 were saved when they were above 36. What does it tell you? The more years are gone, the older it becomes, or the older it becomes the harder it is for you to make a decision for Jesus. How many youths are in church who are not even baptized? One gentleman called to ask me, 
I have a girlfriend who is a fourth year I've just finished campus. She's not my wife. What should I do? One of the indications that this is a Christian is baptism. And Jesus has said that told me God was unless you baptize the water and the Holy Spirit, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. What is the act of, what is the commitment that you have shown to the Lord? The older it becomes, you become, the harder it will be for, 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 to be set to make a decision for Jesus Christ. And so this one began when he was a youth. Our title of the message is Begin from the youth. And uh, I want us to pick another verse, another, an, another, another verse that is showing seriously that we need to do something. We need to use our talents and our gifts that the Lord has given us when we are not. Let's go to the book of First Samuel chapter 17. I hope you're writing those uh, verses down. First Samuel chapter 17. This was the time that David and Goliath Fighting. Now, the message reached the king, and the king called David. And he found that he was a small boy. And then it says in verse 33, let's go to 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 30. Okay, let me begin verse uh, 32. Okay, verse 31. What David, what David said was overheard and reported to Saul, and Saul sent for him. David said to Saul, Let not one lose heart on the account of the Philistines. Your servant will go and fight him. If you look at David, a very small boy, who is saying that he's going to fight Goliath, and the soul of the king of Israel was huge, was bigger than David. Saul must have shook his head. Bastard, Saul, Saul replied, You are not able to go out against the Philistine and fight him. For you are only a young man. The other version says, You are only a boy. And he has been a warrior from his youth. The other version says, He has been a fighting man from his youth. Very many things begin when we are in youth. I don't know that you are useless or you are useless. I mean, Obadiah began to fear the Lord when he was a youth. David was told that Goliath began fighting when he was a youth. Now, I don't know whether you are thinking along with me. Joseph feared God in the court of Pharaoh when he was a youth. Daniel shut that Meshach and they made critical decisions when they were youths. It all begins when we are youths. And God has not left us like that. You see, it's like a servant who has been employed in a, in a compound. Like maybe in your home, you have servants. They don't come with chairs. They don't come with mangas, shamba boys, jambas. They are employed, and the owner gives them everything they need to work for. Hear this. Jesus left us with the talents and gifts that we can use to work in his mind. Let me repeat that one again. Jesus has given us the power of the Holy Spirit who has endowed us with gifts and talents to use. In his mind. So we have no exit. As we look at this Obadiah, 
the fear of the Lord began when he was alive. Saul is telling David, you cannot be able to go and fight this man. He has been a fighting man from his youth. Let me tell you this. Paul is telling us, let no one despise your youth. Very many people have despised our youth because we are involved in things that does not glorify God. Have we been despised? When the elders, when our parents look at us, they wonder, who will marry this one? Who is going to get married to this one? Because we are childish. Paul again tells us that when I was a child, I used to speak like a child, talk like a child, blah, 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 like a child. Now that I am grown up, I put childish things away. Very many of us have not put childish things away. And so, we have to come to the Lord and surrender our lives to Jesus so that he may hold us to accept the people. It has to begin when we are youths. In that book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 12, verse 1, which was in our key text. Remember, let's just go there, let's just go there and, uh, and uh, see what the Bible says. In the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 1, the Bible says, Remember your creator in the days of the earth. Before the days of trouble come and the years approach when you can say, I find no pleasure in them. Again, it's there. Remember your creator in the days of the earth. Just like Obadiah, Fear the Lord from his youth. Goliath was fighting from his youth. Without a fight, you will not have courage. Then he says, before the days of trouble come, the days of trouble are coming. And the years are approach when you will say, I have no pleasure in them. Before the sun, and the stood, and the light, and the moon, and the stars grew dark, and the clouds returned after the rain. We were several years, we were around uh, six years, we were in a district meeting. It was a district board. A retired pastor, I cannot forget who is called pastor, stood up and said, I'm old. I admire you young people the way you walk very fast. He told us that when somebody gives him a call, let's him in town. He has to prepare in his mind that tomorrow I'm going to town. He cannot lie up immediately and go to town. Right now, if somebody tells you, come for dinner. You can even exit this meeting and go for dinner. But days are coming when you will have no pleasure with the Bible says. The sun and the light and the moon and the stars will grow dark when you have no energy. Look at Raila, 1990s, and look at him at this moment. He's old. The energy he had in 1990, and the energy he has now, it's going down. Days are coming when you will have no pleasure. Use your youthful in a meaningful way to build yourself. Don't deceive yourself as a youth. And days will come when you have no pleasure. Many youths are destroying themselves. Right away, 
people are engaged themselves in promiscuous activities, prostitution, immorality. You go to the counter and buy pills and take them for pleasures of 5 to 10 to 20 minutes. Pills that even mothers who have a child or two they are not supposed to take them because they can render them. But your business is now. Days are coming when you want a child. You're not conceived. We are wasting our energies outside there. These are coming when you need that energy in your marriage. It's not there. And you run for the anger, which you destroy. When the sun and the light and the moon and the stars grow dark and the clouds return after the rain. Now, let's go back to my diary. I still wonder what kept this man in that evil environment as far shining the darkness. Is it possible for us youths to be like Obadiah that we cannot be influenced by the king, by the friends, by the movies, by the fashions of this world? I preach so much in Nairobi. I see nowadays ladies in biker shops. Men play together and all that. How can I stay in this world and never be influenced? There is a secret that this man has had, and if we get this secret, if we get this secret, I want to tell you that we can survive in this rotten, evil society. Let's go to the book of uh, Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5. And get this secret. How can we be in this world not being influenced? In the book of uh, Romans chapter 5, verse 20, I read King James Version, which has the words that are not. The Bible says, Moreover, the Lord entered that their offense might abound. Where sin abounded, grace be much more abound. Let me repeat that one again. Where sin Abounded, grace be much more abounded. About. Now, I want to believe that maths was not optional when we were in secondary, and even when we were in university or uh, college, you must calculate maths. Now, assume that I'm a white or a black color. So we write C in a full color above or above it. Downwards, grace did much more above. Above and above cross, on top it remains C. And below it remains deep much more. What does it mean? The ratio of sin to grace is one, two, three. That where sin is, grace deep much more. Implying it is easier to do right than to do wrong. No wonder Obadiah was able to survive in that evil environment. No wonder Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were able to survive 
in Babylon without their parents being there. Now, there is this song we were almost singing, song number 109. I want you to see the first one. Song number 109, SDMH. Marvelous grace of our Lord. Grace that exists our sin and our guilt. Right? Where sin abound, grace did much more abound. As well as the Bible says, where grace, where sin abound, grace did much more abound. No wonder the Bible is saying that this marvelous grace exceed our sin and our guilt. This is what kept Obadiah. This is what can keep us so that we may use our talents and our gifts in the right way. This was a good man in a hard place. This was Obadiah in a hard, a good man, in a hard place. Which experience are you having being in Carcass? In your neighborhood? Which experience are you having saying that it's my genes, it's the influence? This evening, can you be a palm in the desert? Can you be a leaf of the valley with beautiful flowers but growing on top of the sewage and the sewage does not taint the flowers? It is Jesus Christ who said in the book of John chapter 17 verse 15, I do not pray that you may remove them from the world, but keep them from the evil one. Everywhere you go, the devil is there. So the best thing to do is to pray that the Lord may keep us in this evil world. This evening, it is possible to begin fearing the Lord from our youth. It is possible for us to stand firm like Joseph in the house of Potiphar, where they were alone, and Joseph ran away and left the cloth behind them. He said that it's better for me to leave the cloth behind me than leave the character behind me. Many of us have left the cloth behind me and the character behind me. But the marvelous grace that exceeds our sins and our guilt can keep us in this sinful world. It is possible to begin from our youth. I want to give you a challenge. You can be a good man or a good lady in a hard place. If Obadiah was able to survive, a place where Jezebel killed men and women in the court. If Obadiah was able to survive a place where there were, uh, there were altars of Baal everywhere, a whole nation had turned towards Baal. If he was able to survive there, we have hope that we can begin it from our youth. And so this evening, I want to ask you that ask the Lord to give us extraordinary power so that we may be able, we may be able to survive in this sinful world. And the Lord will give us that grace. May the Lord bless the reading. So next time we are going to look at uh, how to use these talents and gifts as we are youths. 
we are going to use it. So this moment, I'm going to give you time to ask questions or do additions before I pray. We still have around 20 minutes or 15 minutes. Any question or any addition? Any question, any addition? You can also write it. Any question, any addition? Okay, since you don't have uh, questions, additions, let me ask you a question. If where there is sin, grace did much more abound, and we have said it is easier to see to, to do good than to see. Why do you find it is easy to do evil, even without thinking, than doing good? I want someone to answer. Wycliffe Johnson, Christian. Why do you find it so easy? Uh -huh. I don't know, but let me try. Yeah. Why is it so easy to commit sin than doing the best thing? It's because most of the time you find other groups who want to be law, who want to be people to steal and you're not people who are left behind. You know, most of the time, people perceive Christians, especially Adventists and Lutherans, as strong as they do, as I do. One more than Kama, Ukonyuma. So, most of you find out, I prefer to do things that can clean my fellows so that I do have to do more than doing things that can clean God. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you very much. To add on top of that, I want to let us go to the book of Exodus chapter 23, verse 2. Exodus chapter 23, verse 2. I want to read the first line. I'm, I'm not interested in the entire uh, verse. The Bible says, Do not follow the crowd in the wrong. King James Version says, Thou shalt not follow the crown to be born. It begins like a command, thou shalt not. Very many people are doing things because others are doing them. Let me remind you this evening, the majority are always on the wrong side. Let me repeat that one again, the majority are always on the wrong side. Look at the time of now. Only eight people are saved. Noah and the wife, and the three sons who had married. There was no you who was saved. Let me repeat that one again. There was no you who was saved. Where were they? Everybody is doing it. I don't want to be left behind. And they perished. Eight, God is in respect of people. During the time of Sodom and Gomorrah, Five cities which were populated like Nairobi, Kisu, whatever, populated five cities. Four people came out, one looked behind and became a bit of sauce. Three people were sent out of five populated cities. God is the of people. When the Israelites were getting out of Egypt, they counted the number. They found 600 foot men, 600 men, 600,000 men, over half a million. They did not count children and women who are men. And so, the commentator said there were around 2 million. Out of those 2 million, how many entered into Canaan? Only two. That was Joshua and Caleb. The rest of the generation that entered Canaan were born in the desert. God is not a respect of people. So don't judge the crowd to do evil. There is that song that uh, the Tanzanians have sung. Na kila mtu ata uchukua 
Muziko wake mwenyewe Na kila mtu atatoa Habari zake mwenyewe Beza mungu Siku kiyo inahuja So don't join the crowd Don't join the crowd You will get lost with the cloud. So, so Christy, thanks, thanks for that comment, and I thought I should add that we should not follow the crowd in doing evil. Any other comments or questions? Yes, I've seen a hand there by Johnson. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, thank you, Elder. Anyway, we don't have any excuse not to worship God, not to glorify the name of God, as the Bible has stated. But at uh, most, the challenges that are really facing us, you find ourselves backsliding and not to worship God in the right way. The standard that we have set. I'm um, seeing when I worship, I, when I go to church, I want to be like like a elder so and so, or I want to be like the family of pastor so and so. So at a certain point, we find the people we have set the standard of spiritual, the, the spiritual standard, uh, they backslide. So we feel so much discouraged at a certain point. Uh, level of how we are worshiping declines. So it's really a challenge that uh, I don't know how, can we, how we can go about it. Okay. Uh, you know, when we surrender our lives to Jesus Christ, we depend on Him. We cannot be swayed by the multitude. You know, God's promises are his enablements. When God promises something, there is power in that promise to enable us to live that life. I can tell you something. In my words, there is no power. But in the words of God, there is power. So when we have not surrendered fully unto God, then it becomes a problem. Maybe let's look at Jude. Let's go to the book of Jude, the second last book. Jude 24. Z24. Yeah. Listen to what it says. To he who is able to keep you from stumbling or keep you from falling and present you before his glorious presence without fault with great joy. Do you believe that God can keep us from falling? When we surrender our lives unto God, be sure he will keep us from falling. He will keep us from falling. And so I want to tell you this evening, once we surrender our lives unto Jesus Christ, then it will be easy for us to do good than to do evil. Any other person? Okay, if there is no person, then we're going to pray and then we'll hand the program back to Basil. Let us pray. Our Father and our God in heaven, we want to thank you for this evening. We thank you for the good news that we are seeing about Christ did much more. Thank you for the hope you've given us this evening. It is impossible for us to begin from you. Like Obadiah, like Goliath, like Joseph, like Shadrach, Daniel, Meshach, and Abed. It is impossible. Teach us how to surrender at the feet of Jesus. Give us extraordinary power to overcome extraordinary challenges in our lives. We thank you for this. We pray that you are the Lord. Bless us above 
others could be looking for jobs, life partners, others maybe could be fighting some diseases in them, whatever they are not, others will be not be having peace at our homes, others are orphans, whatever they are not, meet us at our homes of media. As we rest this night, we pray that you be with us for prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, before Basil uh, picks it up, I want to challenge you. I know Rongo Central means you are many. Here we are seeing almost uh, four people. Please, next time, we need to have more people. There is a lot that people have missed. I don't know whether you are recording this, but people have missed a lot. They could be in social media right away. They could be with some social media. It is good that people create time to listen to the word of God so that they may be blessed. Thank you. Good night. Back to Basa. Uh, thank you so much. I hope you have all the blessed you want to thank God for this uh, And uh, I think you cannot afford to miss but to do those who will invite your fellow friends. Uh, so maybe before we end, I would just like, uh, because we are very few, I would like to hear the, the voice of everyone say hi before we have the last communications, then we uh, depart. So Brother Wheatley, if you be so silent, kindly greet us. Uh, we believe. Okay, seemingly you're not uh, around. Johnston, you can say hi. Hi, everyone. Mm -hmm. I've, been, I've been blessed with the sharings. Thank you. Amen. 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 Thank you. Uh, Christine, you can say hi and give us the last one. Hello, everyone. Hello. Uh, thank you so much, Kesha, for the sharing. It was really impactful in our life, and it's something that you can apply in our daily life. We look forward to part two and sure we invite you in so that we don't miss this blessing. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, may God bless you on the next time you come with friends. Uh, I can see uh, Brother Brian, Elder Brian, to that you can also say hi. Thank you. Yes, yes, you can get me. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, for the invitation to the past, I'm privileged to share with you uh, this wonderful session today. Although I was lost uh, for some time, I had an emergency, but uh, we thank God it is uh, a blessing to be with you, or rather, it was a blessing to be with you. Thank you. Have a blessed night. Yes. Back to you, brother. Okay, thank you so much. Welcome. To this meeting, we also invite you. So, uh, without uh, wasting any time, I'd just like to thank all of you for a fine time to come. And I pray that you may also share the blessings that you received from this place. If there are lessons that you've learned, kindly you can uh, share with others so that they may know more about talents and invite them to. Uh, the other meeting. So our next meeting will be in the first Thursday of next month. Uh, so kindly, uh, if it is bundles, prepare. If it is uh, your heart, also prepare. I don't know if there is uh, any other communication from the department. Okay. Assembly. 
I can see none. Okay, you can see a limit. I'm a, a movie. <laughs> yes, welcome as we finish. You can also uh, just say hi. Uh -huh. Amundi. Okay, seemingly she is not getting us, but anyway, I uh, will thank you for this uh, uh, this time and our speak also. May God really bless you. We have a last prayer, then uh, we can live at our own our pleasure. Uh, Elder Brian, and as I'm from there. Okay, thank you. Let's pray. Our gracious Heavenly Master Lord, you have told us that as youths we should know that we are building our characters for eternity. Father, much as we say, and it now lies with us to apply them in our lives. May you, O oh God, grant us an impression and a realization of your presence and help, even as we purpose in heart to fulfill your promises in us. Lord, thank you so much for we do know that you will also grant us a peaceful night rest. Forgive us all our sins and may you, O oh God, shower us above all else with a rich measure of your spirit. This is our prayer in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Uh, God bless the Lord. Bless the Lord.